And now we have this perfect little uh, numerical model that we completely control and we can dissect it to try to understand what these different um, geometries represent. But for this, of course, we need a conceptual model. We need somewhere that we can turn to to compare our model or our outcrop or our seismic data to some theoretical distribution of facies. And where are we going to find this? Well, the most well-known diagram or model, if you want, is known as the exon slug. So what is the exon slug? It is not an invertebrate. It is a representation of what idealized sequence would look in a classic, mostly classic system. So here's a diagram of the exon slug. It is a rather complex diagram, but the point that I want to make is that we have here in this diagram a full sequence with its idealized geometries. We start with a sequence boundary on top of the previous um, sequence. And the sequence boundary represents emergence and exposure, so a drop in base level. That drop in base level creates a low stand tract or LST that you can see here in red and in orange. So that LST, of course, is deposited base inward because base level or sea level is so low. Once we are in the low stand situation, the only thing that can happen is for sea level or base level to rise again. And then we can have deposition of what is known as a transgressive system tract or TST. So that's when base level rises. Once base level has reached its maximum, we have a very important surface known as the maximum flooding surface of, or MFS. That's when the trajectory of the shoreline changes from moving landward to back to progradation and moving basinward. And so we are then in what is known as the HST or the high stand tract. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at each one of these stages step by step and look at how they look in the model and what um, surface characterizes these different uh, system tracts. So let's start with the so-called falling stage system tracts and the low stand tract. The falling stage system tract or FSST represents the time when base level is falling, so it goes from maximum sea level to minimum sea level, whereas the low stand tracts refer to when base level is at its minimum. So how does that look in our model? Well, the falling stage system tracts represent the falling of sea level or base level. So if we look at this diagram here, we have, of course, our sands here in yellow, our, our beach sand. Always try, try to track the beach sand because it's a good marker for clastic sequences. We'll talk later about carbonate sequences, but in clastic, using the beach facies is a great way to um, evaluate where the uh, where base level is going. So if base level falls, then the sand will follow the motion of base level. And you can see that those sands now show a progradation towards the basin center. So we have shallow water yellow facie sand that move towards the basin center following sea level. This is known as a forced regression and the FSST or the falling stage system tract is known to generate a forced regression. So what is a forced regression? What do we understand by forced regression? Let's try to look at some diagram, theoretical diagram that explains what a forced regression is. So a forced regression is when base level falls. So in this diagram, you can see that base level fall from its position at number one to its position at number four. And you can see that going from number one to three and four, we have progressively lower base level, just like we saw in our model. Now, because base level is falling, all the facies have to migrate. They're forced to migrate towards the basin center, just like we saw our beach deposits, which are only deposited basically into the maximum uh, wave base, where we have lots of uh, water energy. These deposits, this type of deposits shifts towards the basin center. 
So that's a forced regression. And one characteristic of the forced regression is because base level is falling, we expose the sediment in the hinterland and that leads to erosion. So a forced regression is characterized by an unconformity at the top, by erosion at the top, because the older sediments are exposed and eroded. So that's really kind of a characteristic of a forced regression.